Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, I'm going to go over the best GameCube emulator on Android. Probably the only emulator on Android right now for GameCube worth considering, Dolphin Emulator. Let's get started. And before I get into too many details here, please note this emulator is incredibly resource heavy and requires a pretty new uh, high performance phone. So I'm using a Galaxy Note 9 with a Snapdragon 845. Uh, if you have a Galaxy S8 with the 835 or even an older phone, you may run into multiple issues. So you will need a fairly recent uh, phone with a fairly high-end processor. So the Snapdragon 845 is in the new Asus phone. Um, it's in a bunch of other phones. I believe the OnePlus has it as well. So just take a look at your specs. Uh, just for comparison, I am using a phone with a Snapdragon 845. And to get the app is fairly simple. It's available on the Google Play Store. Uh, this is the latest stable edition on the Google Play Store. If you're looking at getting the latest cutting edge version, so the bleeding edge, it may have issues. Um, check out dolphin-emu.org slash download and you can manually install the APK. So if you take a look at here uh, at the website and I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. Uh, the latest version is 5.0-9140. So if you're running into issues with the stock uh, Dolphin emulator here right from the Google Play Store, take a look at these development versions and feel free to experiment, install different ones, see which one works for you. Because I know for a fact with uh, Raycast emulator, I have to choose one that's not on the Play Store in order to work correctly. So it's really hit and miss considering how intensive this emulator is on your device. An older version may work better for you. Now in terms of installing games, so once you have the emulator installed, you will need games on your device in order to play. You do not need a BIOS file uh, for these games as the emulators have them built in, so you're okay there. You do not need to supply your own BIOS files. You will need to supply your own game files. And I've noticed virtually no difference as to whether or not I have the games on an external SD card or on the internal memory. So if you have a now, if you have a slow micro SD card, I would probably not recommend using it. So for reference here, this is the exact memory card that I'm using in my phone. The Sandus Extreme 64 gigabyte micro SDXC UHS-3. I'm using a Samsung Galaxy Note 9, the North American version with the Snapdragon 845. So here I do have Dolphin running. You can see the exact same screen here. I'm just mirroring my screen. Um, so if you do see me looking down, I'm just looking at my phone. Now, I've got three games loaded. I've got two different regions uh, of Twilight Princess here for Zelda. Uh, I have the North American region and the uh, European region. I noticed no difference. So I've read a little bit that it depends on the difference in region of the game for your uh, emulation success. And I don't believe that's correct. Uh, it might be for some people's phones, but for mine, I've noticed no difference. Now, if you look at the version I'm using, I'm using 5.0-8991, and this is the one that's available in the Google Play Store. Uh, so there's a few things that I want to touch on. First and foremost, if you ever want to uh, set the settings for all of your games, as soon as you import games, they're shown in this menu here. If you ever want to edit the settings for all of your games, uh, you can just take a look at the top bar up here uh, with all of the uh, settings. There's a picture, there's a controller. Uh, I don't recommend using those. So I recommend if you click and hold on the individual game, you can bring up the settings menu here and this will change settings for each individual game. Now, I will say this, each game generally with my experience will not run with the same settings. Uh, I find that each game needs settings slightly tweaked in order to generate the best performance. And I'll show you an example here. So here's my settings for Capcom versus SNK2. So I go into core settings. If I go into general, 
I'll show you my exact settings I'm using. My CPU core, I'm using the JIT ARM64 recompiler. Dual core, I have checked off. Override emulated CPU clock speed, no. Emulated CPU clock seat speed, I have set 100. Uh, speed limit, I have set at 100. Audio stretching, no. Enable save states, you can do this. Uh, I just have them off for the time being. I'm not too concerned about save states for Capcom versus SNK2. Lock screen to landscape, I have checked as yes. That's completely up to you and your preference. And then I also have enable usage statistics reporting, and that's an optional one as well. I like to have it open. That way, if I run into an issue, the Dolphin team knows what's going on here. Uh, interface settings, this is up to you. I have used panic handlers and show on display on screen display messages checked. Uh, when it comes to GameCube, system language, I have is English. Override language on NTSC games, I have no. Uh, GameCube slot one device, I have as the GCI folder. Now you can put memory card, you can put tummy, you can put whatever you want here. I just use GCI folder because I feel it works the best for me. Now if I go into, I'll go into now the GFX settings. This is where a lot of people will be configuring uh, settings for your games, me included here. So video backend, I use OpenGL. I run into issues with Vulkan and software and null isn't really gonna do anything for you. Show FPS, I recommend having this checked because you might think the game's running well, meanwhile it's running maybe running slow or too fast. So definitely keep that checked. It's very, very handy, especially when you're trying to configure your games to make things go properly here. Shader compilation mode, I have set to skip drawing. Now you can put it as in, uh, this is default here, just in uh, synchronous. I have it as in asynchronous um, and skipping just for this game, and you'll see why. Uh, aspect ratio, I keep it as auto. You can do force 16, nine, force four to three, stretch to window. Enhancements and hacks. This is a big section here where you will see a noticeable difference in your games. So internal resolution, I recommend keeping it at one time native. Uh, if for some reason you have like a ridiculously super powered phone that's not available to people right now, <laughs> you can try cranking these all the way to 4K. Uh, but for most people, probably one times or even two times native to get it to 720p, uh, you can probably get away with. Now full scene anti-aliasing, I keep this at one time. Uh, this filtering I keep at one time as well. Again, you can go up to 16 times if you want, but it's probably going to uh, cause some issues for you. Post-processing effect, I have set to off. You can put 16, 32 bit, whatever you want here. I keep that off. Uh, scaled EFB cop copy, I keep as off. Uh, per pixel lighting, I have off. Force texture filtering, off. Uh, force 20 bit coloring, uh, forces the game to render RGB color channels in 24-bit, thereby, thereby increasing quality but reducing color banding. It has no impact on performance and causes a few graphical issues. If unsure, leave this checked. This doesn't affect performance, so I have it checked. It doesn't matter. Disable fog. This one may cause issues with some games, so I recommend keeping it off. So arbitrary minimap detection I have is off. Widescreen hack I have off and stereoscopy I have off as well. Now if I go back here into hacks, uh, these settings will also impact your performance. Skip EFB access from CPU, I have unchecked. Ignore format changes, I have unchecked. Uh, store EFB copies to texture only, I have checked. Uh, texture cache accuracy, or cache accuracy, however you wanna say it, uh, I have set to low. GPU texture decoding, check mark. Store XFB copies to texture only, I have as a check mark. Immediately present XFB. I've run into uh, graphical issues when I have this checked, whereas uh, sometimes the graphics flash a little bit. So I do re recommend uh, just playing with that to see how the game handles it. Now with fast depth calculation, I have a check mark here. So you can see that the main ones I have disabled are immediately present XFB. 
and the top two. Skip EFB access and ignore format changes. Now, if I go to load the game here, you can see based on what I have here, I'm running at roughly 60 frames a second. You can see some of the text or some of the images are not loading 100% correctly, but uh, everything else in the game, once it gets into the game now, there's not really any stuttering. I do have the audio muted. And you can see there are, there are frame dips. Uh, that happens a lot with a lot of emulators and even games if you have Steam and watch your frames per second. Uh, what really matters is when you're in game. Okay, so in game now, you can see it's running close to 60 frames a second. It is jumping around a little bit, but overall it's running fairly well. And now I'm gonna leave this game and watch what happens when I change a couple of settings here. So I'm gonna go into graphics. I'm gonna go into hacks. I'm gonna skip EFB access from CPU, ignore format changes and immediately present XFB. So if I do that, it's gonna save. All right, now we'll open the game here and you can immediately see the FPS. It's gonna jump quite a bit. So I'm at 240 frames a second now up from 60. And that's what I mean where just a few check marks in the uh, hack section can really change your uh, experience. So there is a bit of graphical flickering you can see, uh, partially because I'm running such a high frame rate right now. Uh, you can see the EO here is flickering on and off. Uh, there's quite a bit of difference in overall experience compared to the last game uh, when I had it running at 60 frames a second. And this is why I recommend changing individual settings per game because each game will perform differently. So you noticed how I had 240 frames a second in Capcom versus SNK2 by just enabling those checkboxes. If I go into hacks for my Twilight Princess game, I've got them all checked off by default. And that's because I need to. <laughs> the game is a lot more demanding than Capcom versus SNK2. Uh, and each game kind of runs differently. Now enhancements, again, I have, them, have all of these um, the enhancements I have pretty much the same for each game. So I don't normally change those. It's the hacks that I change for each game. This is where I spend a lot of time in uh, fiddling around because the hacks greatly impact your game performance. So I've got Twilight Princess booted up here. And when you see it booted up, I'll get roughly 60 frames a second to start and then it drops down to 30. So in the menu here, it looks like it's running fine at 30 frames a second. Everything looks good at this point. Uh, the, the volume sounds okay when I've got the volume on uh, and everything runs very well. But this is just the menu screen. And now we get into the actual game save and I'll go in and click start. And this is where you'll notice the frames start to drop. And this is me fiddling around with a ton of settings trying to get this game optimized. Unfortunately, our cell phone technologies right now are not at computers where we can run things at full frames a second. So you can see I'm running roughly 20 to 22 frames a second. You can notice a, a slowdown. When I got the audio on, you notice a slowdown in the audio as well. And I'll show you where the game encounters issue. So I haven't been able to get this running smoothly yet on my phone. Uh, if I go into the game or into Hyrule field here, you will see a big, big issue. Now, pardon, I'm just, I'm controlling with one hand here and trying to uh, watch my screen and talk <laughs> at the same time. So it is a little difficult, but you will see the frames drop from 20 to 30 right down to four. And this is horrendous. And this is probably some of the best frame rates I've been able to generate in Twilight Princess. Uh, with all the hacks, I fiddle around with all the settings. So you can fiddle around with the settings and see what you can do, but I'm sitting at between four and five here. It's it's not pretty. Uh, and if I go back, I'll show, show you another thing that I sometimes change. If you goof something up, uh, you just go to clear game settings and you can retry everything. So don't be scared about breaking something because you can fix it here. It's easy peasy and do it at a per game basis so you don't mess up any of your other games when you're fiddling around with the settings. 
But look at those settings in comparison to Twilight Princess to Capcom versus SNK2. Same settings, Capcom versus SNK2, I'm running at 240 frames a second. Toilet Princess, I'm running in, in, the, in the field at four frames a second. And if I try fiddling around in core settings here, uh, just to give myself a boost of performance, you'll see what happens. So I'll override emulated CPU clock speed, change it to 200% here, because why not? Set the speed limit to 200%. And that's all I'm going to change. Now I'll boot the game up again and you'll see a massive FPS boost and the game's going to run crazy fast. So you can see I'm already over 100 here. Uh, the game is running super fast. You can see how fast it's getting through all of this stuff. Uh, watch how fast Link will run on his horse here. <laughs> so he's he's been turbocharged. Um, it's still kind of locking in at 60 frames a second. You can see how fast the menu is scrolling here, how fast things load up. But as soon as I hit uh, Hyrule, or Hyrule Field, it's the same issue. So you can see I'm back down to 20 frames a second here. So unfortunately, your experience will not be the same on all games. Some games run better than others. Uh, the emulator is still being worked on, so you know the performance of this game may change in time. Uh, there might be additional settings that come out, things get optimized, you never know. But anyways, it's at a game per game basis, so just try it out and see how it goes. You can see I'm back down to four frames a second here. So your experience on Dolphin Emulator will be hit and miss. Uh, it varies by game, it'll vary by device, whatever device you're using and it'll vary based on what options you use. But I do recommend fiddling around with the options. See what can work best for you. Uh, each game performs differently. And overall, it's definitely worth a try. You don't really have to worry about breaking anything. You can always just reset everything. Uh, you can check out the cutting edge emulators to see if they, they work a little bit better. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. If you like my video, leave a like. If you didn't like my video, leave a like, hit that subscribe button. Let me know if you've had more success running Dolphin Emulator in the comments or less success. Just let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Anyways, thank you everyone. Take care.